Father, we praise your presence. We lift high your presence. We honor your presence. And we glorify your name. You're an amazing God and we give you praise. You're an amazing God and we give you praise. We're, you're an amazing God and we give you praise. We count it a privilege to be where you are. Thank you for life. Thank you for life. Thank you for life. Thank you for life. We're so grateful, Jesus. We're so grateful, Jesus. We're so grateful, Jesus. We're so grateful. Hallelujah. We give you praise today. Hallelujah to Jesus. Come on, raise your praise to gratitude. Raise your praise to gratefulness. We've been locked up for 18 months and he's provided grace for us to come together. He says when we come together, he commands blessings over us. I feel the commanded blessing of Jesus today. There's nothing worth more that can ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I have tasted and seen. How the sweetness of love. And my heart beat. And, and my shame is Let's sing it together to His glory. There's nothing worth more. There's nothing worth more that can ever come close.
Chapter 30, you can be seated. First Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 through 8. And the word of the Lord reads, Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day, the Amalites had invaded the south, and Ziklag attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire and has taken captive the women and those who with were small and great and they did not kill anyone but carry them away and they went their way so David and his men came to the city 
and there it was burned with fire. Their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David and his two wives, Ahinanan, the Jesuelite, Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Camelites had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him because of the souls of all the people that was grieved. Every man and his sons and daughters, but David strengthened himself in the Lord God. And David said to Abithathar, priest, Imelach's son, please bring the ephod here to me. And Abithathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Let us pray. Gracious God, we just give you praise and thanks for the opportunity to be on this holy ground. We thank you, O oh God, for the opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we ask you to speak to our hearts individually as well as collectively. Help us to hear what thus saith the Lord today. We give you thanks, O oh God, for this opportunity to praise and honor you in this place. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. At this time, we'd like to welcome all of our guests. If you're a first-time guest here with us at First Baptist Church of Glenarden, we'd ask that you just stand and let us know who you are. are we, do we have any first-time guests? If you stand, just wave your hand and let us know. Amen. I see some guests out there. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We want you to know that we welcome you here today. We know that there are many other places that you could have been, maybe not as many as usual, but we just thank you that you've come to worship with us today. Amen? Amen. Go on my own, just a 
If I can, if I can hear from you, and I know what to do, I won't, I won't go alone. I'll never go on my own. Never go on my own. Just let your spirit, let your spirit guide. guide me. this evening at 6 30 p.m under the tent for communion service you can also join us on all of our virtual platforms for our online participants please have a cracker and grape juice ready as we take part in this sacred service first baptist family we have an important update regarding returning to indoor worship our return to indoor worship services has been postponed until further notice all Sunday services and communion services will be held under the tent through the end of October. As a reminder, our new Sunday worship service times are 9 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. We're also excited to announce, if you miss the morning services, we will rebroadcast the service online at 6.30 p.m. And you can always rewatch our services at your convenience on Facebook, YouTube, and our church's website. For the most up-to-date information, be sure to visit our website, fbcglenarden.org forward slash coronavirus. Calling all middle school and high school students. Join the Unashamed Youth Ministry for the best youth praise party in the world. Join us at 7.30 p.m. on Friday, October 8th as we kick off our new series, No Place Like Home. Tune in to Unashamed DMV on YouTube and Facebook Live. Yes, we are still virtual only, but you know our motto. We're shut in, but not shut down. And along with our experience night filled with praise and worship, games, connect groups, and a relevant message from God, we're introducing our new bi-weekly tribe night, where after a brief general discussion, we'll break out into our separate tribes for the rest of the service. Text U-Tribe to 797979 to join a tribe and get connected to the best youth ministry in the world. Or email info at unashameddmv.com if you need more information. Ladies, have you registered for He Loves Me 22? 21 Thursday, September 30th at 12 noon is the last day to register for this life-changing conference. As a reminder, He Loves Me 2021 will now be completely virtual. Join us virtually on October 1st and 2nd from the comfort and safety of your home as a powerhouse lineup of dynamic guest preachers, speakers, and artists help us learn to abide in Christ. We'll be led in worship by Grammy Award-winning artist Tamala Mann and stellar award-winning artist and worship leader Casey J. You'll also learn to abide in various life areas such as marriage and finances in our master classes, including our new fabulous tour master class for ladies 50 and over. 
Make your fifth chapter of life fabulous and faith-filled with coaching from international speaker, entrepreneur, and first female and African-American U.S. Ambassador for International Religious Freedom, Reverend Dr. Ambassador Susan Johnson Cook, educational activist and former national president of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, Cynthia Butler McIntyre, and radio host Mother Love, whose 100-pound weight loss made her a campaign ambassador for the American Diabetes Association. Then be inspired in general sessions on a variety of spiritual and practical topics, including exercising your voting rights. Gain motivation to help change our communities as you hear from the coordinator of the Voter Protection Campaign Turnout Sunday Lawyers and Callers, Dr. Barbara Williams Skinner, joined by social strategist and recipient of the 2010 White House Champion of Change Award, Latasha Brown. Ladies, get ready to be transformed at He Loves Me 2021 and tell a girlfriend to do the same. Visit fbclunarden.org forward slash He Loves Me to register today. That's the news for this week. You can find more details about these events and others on our church website at fbcglenarden.org. Amen, amen. As you can see, we have so many activities here at First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. And we just encourage you to avail yourself of those activities that you too might continue to grow as a dynamic disciple. Amen. It's time to give. Again, we want to encourage you that God is calling all of us to be faithful in our, our giving. But the truth of the matter is none of the activities that we have here at First Pop would not be possible without your giving, without your faithful giving to God. So we encourage you today to visit the link that's on the screen. We also encourage you, there are receptacles throughout this tent today that you can give and continue to be a supporter of this ministry. Avail yourself of the opportunity. The Bible calls us to be faithful givers. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, we do thank you for all that thy hands have provided. We thank you, God, that we have nothing without you. You make it possible for us to give. So we ask you now, God, to bless the gift and the giver that your kingdom might continue to stand even here at First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.
For a minute, I'm going to have you stand back up in a second, getting your exercise in today. So glad that you're here today. Thank you all for coming out today. So grateful. I'm honored and thankful for your presence. Amen. Y'all know every Sunday, before every week, we'll let you know about next Sunday because we don't know how long we're going to be out here. We're going to ride this horse of the weather for as long as we can ride it. Something special about coming together and being with people. Internet, we're glad to have the internet crowd. Let's give it up for the internet crowd that's joining us. So glad to have you today. Bless you. But it's something special about being in person, worshiping with the saints. And so I'm grateful for those who are here today. Glad to have the retired pastor of the Day Spring Ministry in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Pastor Cliff Ash. Stand up, Pastor, and his wife, Audrey. Uh, the both of them are with us today. Uh, founder of the MVM Men's Conference that we've hosted for the past several years, and I'm so grateful to have them here today. Thank you all for joining us this, this morning. Um, I guess it's afternoon now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, let's see, what else do I want to say? Thank you, Lord! <laughs> some people up in this camp that don't mind praising the Lord. When I think about how good God has been to me, 
Let's pray. Stand up. Let's pray. If you're able to stand, let's pray. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory to the name of Jesus. Father, we worship you. We bless you. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We, ma we magnify your name. We exalt your name. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you for keeping us all week long. Thank you for giving us a mind to come into the house of prayer to worship you. Thank you, Father. We could have lost our minds. We could have been dead and buried in our graves. But Lord, you spared our lives one more day. And we give you the thanks, the glory, and the praise. We pray now that you speak to us, Lord, through your word. Allow your word to speak to us, challenge us, convert us. Dear persons here today, unsaved, save them, backslidden, reclaim them, unsure, cause them to come forth to get assurance somebody who's unchurched draw them Lord and let the name of the Lord Jesus be glorified and manifested in, in his name I pray let us be your mouthpiece for these next few moments to speak life to speak hope to speak healing in Jesus name rebuke the hand of that devil Rebind, bind that devil on every side we pray put a hedge of protection around this place pray not only for the people under this tent but the people that are online I pray for them and intercede for them in Jesus name amen and amen amen and amen hallelujah amen you can't be seated so proud of you. Listen, listen. Levette came up here unsolicited. She said, I'm a backslider and I want to get right with God. I'm so proud of you. And the angels are dancing. And guess what? I think there might be some other people who want to make the same choice. You opened up the floodgates. Somebody else want to get saved? Come on up here right now. Somebody else want to rededicate? Come right now. Somebody want to get insurance? Come right now. Right now. Right. You need a church home? Come right now. Right now. That's right. Come on. Right now. That's right. Amen. Right there. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Hallelujah. That's right, that's right. that's trying to hold you back that's the enemy that's the voice of the enemy the day you hear his voice harden not your heart I see you come on amen somebody else is there anybody else unsaved backslidden unsure come right now right this instant right right this moment come and get right with God now 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 
Or maybe you need a church home. You're already saved, but you need a church home. And you want to come. Come now. Come, come, come. I see somebody else coming. Come on, right now. Come. My, my, my. The angels are dancing and having a fit. Praise him. Praise him. So proud of you. So proud of you. My Lord, have mercy. Levette, you see what you started? You started all of this by having the courage to come up here and say, I'm backslidden and I want to get right with God. My God, praise Him, praise Him. Father, I thank you for these who've come by the urging of your spirit. I pray that you meet their needs, whatever they need, meet it, Lord, grant it in the name of Jesus. Save the unsaved, reclaim the backslider. Whatever they stand in the need of, Father, I pray that you grant it to them in the matchless and wonderful name of Jesus the Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Y'all go out that way. Just head that way. Go with them that way. Give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a shout. That's a nice patty cake for me, but give the Lord a big old shout. I'm still preaching, so y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. I still got to, I, I still got to preach for just maybe I'll abbreviate it a little bit. Y'all supposed to say no. Take your time. Open your Bibles to First Samuel chapter eight. I want to talk to you about David. First Samuel chapter thirty. I'm sorry, chapter thirty. I don't know why I said chapter eight, but chapter thirty. First Samuel. If you have your Bibles, turn there and hold there. Hold it there for a moment. I'm going to walk you through this story about David. I want to talk about David. David fascinates me. I'm fascinated by David. I'm fascinated by his journey, his life. So many things that I've learned about life from David. I learned as I watched David get rejected on multiple occasions, I learned through his life that rejection is a sign that God has a special assignment on your life. He got rejected by his father, rejected by the king, rejected by his wife, rejected by rejects. He had a series of rejects, and rejection means that. I learned that. I learned that God can use a person even though they are jacked up jokers. David was a jacked up joker. He had, he had done some horrible things in the course of his life. And yet I'm amazed that when the Bible gives us commentary about him, it says that he was a man after God's own heart. Fascinated by that. I'm fascinated. Fascinated by it. And I'm fascinated that this journey of David began uh, when he was a teenager. At, at the age of 17, 17 years of age, David did something unbelievable. He was given the assignment by his father of going down to the battlefield where his brothers who were in the army, where the army of the Lord were in battle against the Philistines. And at this particular battle, on this particular day of the battle, they were battling against the Philistines. So the instructions, uh, the challenge was that the Philistines said, instead of us using our weaponry against each other. We'll send out our mighty warrior while Israel, you send out your mighty warrior and we'll let the two of them fight and whoever wins, the other army and nation is in subjection to them. I'm fascinated that David goes down to the battlefield to see how the battle is warring and to take some bread to his brothers and when he gets down there, he is shocked to discover that there's no battle going on. In fact, there's a big giant, Goliath, standing out in the middle of the field waiting for Israel to send out their mighty warrior. And instead of them sending out their mighty warrior, the Israelites are all hiding over in ditches. Because they're afraid, they're scared. 
They're scared to go out and do battle against or send somebody. Nobody is willing. So David comes along and sees this scene and sees and observes that the army of the Lord is hiding over in a ditch. And Goliath, the mighty warrior of the Philistines, is standing in the middle of the battlefield waiting for them to send somebody. And when he hears what's going on, he says, how dare this, listen to this, here's what David said, how dare this uncircumcised Philistines defy the armies of the living God? I wish y'all knew the story, I wouldn't have to tell you the whole story. And he makes the determination, he will go out. He says, I will go out and do battle. I will go out and fight this uncircumcised Philistine. And so he, in fact, the scripture tells us, the story goes on and tells us that he goes out, takes his slingshot and a few stones, and kills Goliath with stones. Chops off his head with the sword, and he's declared a great man. David marches back into the city and the women have lined the streets and they, have sing, they are singing his praises. The women are declaring that Saul, the king, has killed thousands, but David, they said, he's killed 10,000. Get the picture. He only killed one, but they said he killed 10,000. They are shouting and, 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 and celebrating David and King Saul gets jealous, gets mad, gets upset. And in his anger, on multiple occasions, he seeks to kill David. With the king himself trying to kill him, David runs, escapes, hides in an effort to save his life. Are y'all still with me? He ends up running into a cave. And in the cave are a bunch of rejects. In the cave is uh, some men who are in distress, depressed, and in debt. And they ask David to be their leader. And he becomes the leader of the group of rejects. David is the first president of the Joker's ministry. of which I am a member of the Joker's ministry. He's the chief Joker. But he, he, he transforms these men. He does something spectacular with them. He gets them jobs because they're in debt. They are in distress, dis disappointed, depressed, all of that. They got all that going on. But they get a, he helps them get a job. And they get a job by joining the Philistine army. Can you get that? Can you picture that? He joins and leads this men of rejects to join the army of the giant that he just killed. He's joining the enemy's camp. That's like somebody who used to play for the Washington football team now going to join the Dallas Cowboys. It's just unfathomable. It's, un it's unimaginable. But that's what he's done. He has joined this team of people. Are you with me? He has joined this army. And when they are here, the Philistine army are preparing again to go back into battle with the Israelite army. And the armies of the Philistines are lined up and David and his group of rejects are in, are in that group of Philistine army. And the general is inspecting his soldiers and he comes across these Hebrew boys, these Jews. And he says to them, y'all can't fight with us. Y'all can't go into this battle because y'all might switch up and change. Y'all might turn on us. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to let y'all go. So they get fired. So now they head back home, despondent, because now they had a job, but now they've been fired from their job. Anybody, let me find out, has anybody here ever been fired from a job? Let me, I didn't ask the question right. Any of y'all are willing to confess that you got fired from a job? Some of y'all lying. Some of y'all not telling the truth. So they head back to their camp. They head back home. And when they get back there, when they get within visual distance, they see that something's wrong. Something's not right. And when they get there, they see that the, our, their city has been burnt with fire. It's been destroyed. And when they get into the city, 
of Ziglag, where they, where they live, when they get back home, they discover that their wives and children have been taken captive. The, the, uh, verse number three says that uh, they came to the city and there was, verse three, there it was burned with fire and their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Verse four, look at verse four. It says, then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. They're crying because they've lost everything. They've lost their homes. They've lost their families. And the Bible says they wept until they had no more power to weep, no more tears to cry. It is a devastating moment. I wanted to talk to you today because I feel that there's some people in here today that are like David. They've lost some things. Stuff has been destroyed. You're troubled by your circumstances. You're frustrated by how life has treated you. And you have been crying. I know you don't want to confess it among everybody that's here, but just wink your eye at me. I know that there's some people that life hasn't treated you fairly. You feel like life has stolen from you and stuff has happened to you. Some of you have even questioned God, whether or not God really loves you. Does he care about you? Why and how could God allow this to happen to you? Why did God let this happen? Why did God let that happen? Why did you have to go through this and against that? I have a word for you today. Thank all 17 of y'all for that encouraging word to me today. David and his men are in a frustrating situation. They, matter of fact, they, they, uh, I, I'm finding that these men, these guys are in such distress, so, so bothered. That the Bible says right here uh, in verse number uh, uh, six that David was greatly distressed. David himself was distressed. Why would God allow me to be in this situation? Can I say something to y'all real quick? Let me just throw this in for free. Some of y'all are frustrated about how life has treated you, but I think it's important for me to let you know that if whatever comes in your life, if God permits it to come into your life, he will allow it. Don't clap. Wait till I finish. Then clap real loud. Say it real amen. But let me finish the point. If God allows it to come in your life, it's because he knows he's already equipped you to be able to handle whatever you're going through. Some of y'all didn't get that. Some of y'all missed a great spot to say amen. God never allows you to go through a situation that he has not already prior, prior to prepared you to handle. So you have to give God thanks. You know, you know what I've learned to do with life? Whatever comes down the pike, I say, God, praise your name. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. I don't know how this is going to work, but I know somehow or another you're going to work it out. And I've learned to go ahead and give him a shout and give him a praise and give a celebration to him because I know he's already prepared me, put in me, equipped me, anointed me, empowered me, and gifted me. Go on and preach, Pastor. He's already given me enough to be able to take a licking and keep on ticking. He's already put enough in me for me to sustain myself and come out a winner on the other side. Can I get an amen? All things do work together for good to those who love the Lord to those who are the called according to his purpose he's already worked it out and so he has allowed he has put them in a situation and a circumstance he's already uh, given to you and I the ability to be able to do that but these he's distressed because the scripture says right here in verse number six it says the people spoke of stoning him because they, they're talking among themselves about killing him. They're saying, you brought us here. You put us in this situation. Can I stick a pen right here and say something too? Don't ever blame anybody else for your circumstance. Amen. Don't, don't get upset. God is sovereign and he will never allow you to go in a situation that he, as I've already said, that he's not, he hasn't already prepared you for. We want to blame people. See, let me talk to some people who all want to, always want to blame somebody else for what your circumstances might be. Some of the drama you're in, you caused it yourself. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
The people spoke of stoning him. God bless you, bro. Thank you. Appreciate it. I got one witness somewhere up in the camp. Give him a shout. Give him a hand. They upset their man. And look, look at what verse 6 says. It says they, they were grieved. It says that um, for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and daughters. I'm shocked that they didn't say nothing about they were grieved about their wives. I'm just saying. What do you do when life is handing you and passing on to you challenges that you don't feel you should have to go through? How do you handle when nothing's going right? What do you do when it seems like everything's going wrong and everything's backwards and you don't have enough money to pay your bills and sickness is racking your body from, 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 from the top of your head to the sole of your feet? What do you do when your job is not working right and you can't find a job? What do you do when everything's going backwards? Who am I preaching to today? What do you do? What do you say when you take the test but you can't pass the test? What do you do when you try to get a promotion but you can't get the promotion? Preach, Master. What do you do when nothing seems to be going right? I'm preaching to somebody here today who's frustrated with life, who's discouraged with life. I'm coming to preach to somebody who don't know which way to turn or what to do or where to go or what to say when nothing seems to be going your way. I don't know who I'm preaching to. I know I'm talking to you because you can't say nothing. You're looking at me quiet. It's all right. I got a word from you. Somebody say, what do you have to say? I got a word for you. The word is what David did in his most depressing, distressing, distraught situation. He was greatly distressed, but here's what the scripture says. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. What did David do when everything was going wrong and nothing's going right and everything's backwards? The Bible says David strengthened himself. That's a Hebrew word, strengthen, shazak. What does it mean? The word shazak, the word strengthen means that you're in a place or a posture to strengthen yourself, to repair yourself, to make yourself strong. Every now and then, you got to learn how to encourage yourself. I don't know who I'm preaching to today. But I'm, that's, that's, I got this a one point message. I got a one thing to say to you today. This is one declaration, one thing I'm trying to tell you to do. When life seems to be giving you bad and stuff, nothing's going your way and you are frustrated and upset. And if you haven't got there, keep living. I promise you, you will get there sooner or later when it seems like nothing's falling in the way you want it to fall. David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. He learned to encourage himself. And here's what that means. Encourage yourself means to talk to yourself. See, some of y'all's problem is you talking to the wrong people. You talking to people who are all telling you the wrong stuff and the wrong things. And who are making the wrong suggestions. When Job, when Job, I wish y'all knew the Bible. When Job had all of his challenges and his troubles, three of his friends came and talked to him and they all of them said the wrong stuff to him they said Job you're going through all of this hell because you done sinned against God and you need to repent and God will turn it around how many of y'all know God don't punish you for your sins because you would have been in hell a long time ago I wish I had somebody somebody ought to thank God that he didn't punish you for what the stuff you did and the places you went and the things you have done. Somebody ought to give God thanks. He has not rewarded you according to your iniquities. They talked to Job, but they all said the wrong stuff to Job. And some of you are listening to people who are telling you the wrong things. You got to learn to, to talk to yourself. Stop talking to them jokers that's telling you all the wrong stuff and learn how to encourage yourself. Who am I preaching to? Is this maybe? One, two, three. Okay, maybe you ain't there yet. Maybe you haven't got to that place yet. Here's my word to you today. Here, just hear this. Hear this out. One, this is a one-point message. This is what I want you to hear. I want you to get this in your spirit. Get this in your heart. Get this in your mindset. Get this in your, 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 your tongue. <laughs> Learn how to encourage 
yourself. Talk to yourself. Somebody say, talk to yourself. Tell your neighbor, talk to yourself. Look on the other side. Tell the person, I ain't talking to you no more. I'm going to talk to myself. You don't understand what I'm going through. You've never been where I am. You don't know what this drama is like. I'm going to talk to myself. If I have to talk in the car to myself, if I have to talk at work to myself, if I have to talk while I'm in the bathroom to myself, I'll get to wherever I need to go and talk to myself. The question is, what do you say to yourself? Some of you are speaking defeat and frustration and failure to yourself. You're saying the wrong stuff to yourself. You're declaring that you've lost. You're declaring that you can't win. You're declaring that you're defeated. You're saying to yourself, I can't win. I can't get out of this. I don't have an answer. God doesn't care about me. God's punishing me. God's not real. You're saying the wrong stuff to yourself. I have a word for you today. You got to learn to speak the word of God to yourself. When life is not treating you right, tell yourself, Isaiah 54, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Tell yourself, Deuteronomy 28, I am the head and not the tail above and not beneath. Tell yourself, Psalm 18, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. Tell yourself Psalm 20. Some trust in horses and some trust in chariots but we will remember the name of the Lord. Tell yourself Deuteronomy 28. I shall be above and not beneath. Tell yourself Romans 8 37 we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Tell yourself Philippians 4 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Tell yourself Joseph 13 though he slay me yet will I trust in him tell yourself Psalm 27 the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear tell yourself the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want encourage yourself somebody fist bump three or four people and tell them tell yourself speak to yourself Tell yourself to encourage yourself. Stop being frustrated. Stop looking down. Stop thinking bad. Stop accepting defeat. Stop saying you can't win. Tell yourself, I am a winner and not a loser. Tell yourself, I'm getting up from here. I'm not going to stay down. Get up from here. I'm, I'm getting up out of this dreadful situation. I'm coming up out of this darkness. I'm getting up. Speak to yourself. Somebody say encourage yourself. Tell yourself all I know is that God's going to make a way somehow. Tell yourself I'm not going to judge my future. Listen to this. Tell yourself I don't judge my future by my present circumstances. Tell yourself what I'm going through might be painful, but greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Tell yourself, where I am right now is not my final destination. It's not what I'm going to, it's what I'm going through. I want you to tell three or four people, encourage yourself. Just tell them, encourage yourself. Tell them to speak the right things over yourself. Tell them, speak those things that are not as though they are. Tell them. The shift in your life begins by the way you talk to yourself. Who am I preaching to today? Who is this word for today? Speak life over yourself. Speak healing over yourself. Speak victory over yourself. Somebody say, here's what it says. David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Strengthen yourself in the Lord. And, and I want you to learn that portion of the verse and put your name there. Say, John strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Say, Trina strengthened herself in the Lord her God. 
Go ahead, put your name there and make that declaration. Go ahead, put your name there. Say it out loud. Say, I strengthened myself. I'm getting up out of here. I'm going to be a victor. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm coming up out of here. Okay, hold up. I'm almost finished. I'm coming to a close. Then it says this. Then David, verse 7. I'm almost finished. Let me just, I'm going to add this in. This is actually, this is a series. This is two parts to this message. I'm going to pick up part two next week. But let me just throw this in here real freak. Verse 7. Then David said to Abiathar, the priest, Ahimelech's son, please bring the ephod here to me. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David. Bring me the ephod, he said. Do y'all know what ephod is? No, that's why y'all got quiet. An ephod is a garment that the priest wore. And whenever the priest was about to embark upon his priestly duties, he would put on his priestly garments, one of which was the ephod. He'd put the priestly garment ephod on and then enter and do his roles and responsibilities. He put the ephod on. Somebody say he put the ephod on. The ephod represents you entering into your priestly responsibilities. You have a priestly responsibility. And do you know what one of the main priestly responsibilities you have? It is to lead people into worship. Here's what I'm closing. I'm making a declaration to tell you to put your, put your praise on. <laughs> put your praise on. Lead yourself into the throne of worship. Lead yourself into humbling yourself and giving God the glory and the honor. Let me help you out. I've determined that no matter what my external circumstances are, the God that I serve is worthy of my praise. You don't have to beg me to worship God. You don't have to ask me to worship God. You don't have to cheerlead me to worship God. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. You know why? Because I discovered there's a breakthrough in my praise. There's victory in my praise. There's a miracle in my praise. The enemy is defeated when I praise him. The devil's got to back down when I praise him. All I'm trying to tell you is to open your mouth and open your heart and give God the praise. Because when you praise him, the devil's got to back up and God has to take charge. Put your ephod on. Put your ephod on. Humble yourself and put your ephod on. Pick up your praise and give him the glory. Give him the thanks. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and everything he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God he saved me. Who am I preaching to today? I know you're down. I know you're frustrated. I know you feel like you're losing, but put your ephod on. I know you feel fearful of your future, but put your ephod on. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Put your ephod on. I've discovered that the God I serve is worthy of praise because he's already done enough for me for me to give him thanks for what he's already done in my life. If he never does another thing for me, if he never does another thing for me, he's done enough for me to go ahead and put my ephod on. He healed you, some of you, even before you knew you were sick. He opened up doors that were, you didn't deserve to have open. He saved and forgave you of all of your mess and all of your wrong. Put your ephod on. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Can I get about 100 people to help me get 
give God some praise. Can I get about a hundred people to put their ephod on? Can I get about a hundred who can make a declaration, God, you're worthy. God, you are praised. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. He, here's the greatest thing he has done. He died on the cross and took the punishment for our sins. He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. For your sins. So that you and I can have a personal relationship with Jesus. Who am I preaching to today? Somebody here, if you, if you are not saved and you need Jesus, come on right now. You, need, you want a relationship with God? I know we had an altar call already, but this is our second call right now for somebody to come and get right with God. The devil tried to defeat you by helping you and making you think bad and think low, but today God's giving you another opportunity to say yes to him. Get out of your seat and say, you know what? I need Jesus. I want Jesus. I want forgiveness of my sins. I want to rededicate. Maybe you're backslidden and you need to rededicate yourself. Come, come right now. Get out of your seat. Don't be ashamed. We're going to shout and give God the glory. We're going to give God the praise. Maybe you're unsure of your eternal destiny. Right now will be the perfect time for you to come. You're unsure. Come right now. Or maybe you're saved, but you need a church home. Right now is the time for you to come. We'd love for you to be a member of our church. Step on out and come on right now. Either one of those four areas. Come. Amen. I see one. Somebody else come. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Right now. shout for these who have come. Somebody else, anybody else, don't put it off. Don't delay it. The presence of God is here. The presence of Almighty God is here. And he's nudging and pulling on your heart, tugging on your heart for you to come and say yes to him. We're going to shout. The, the angels are going to dance. They're going to rejoice. There's joy in heaven over one person that comes and says yes to him. Anybody else? Come on. Go ahead. Sing that through one more time. So proud of y'all. So proud of y'all. I won't go back. I won't go back. Can't go back. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for these who've come today. Thank you that they heard your voice and they've responded to you. I pray that you meet them right where they need to be met. Minister to their needs. Plant them in your vineyard. Fill them with your spirit. Break every chain in their life and have your way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. If you're online and you want to accept the Lord, there are many of you online. 
Did you want to respond to that? There's a phone number for you to call. There's an email address for you to send an email to. There's a button for you to click. Go ahead and do that right now. Right, right this moment. Say yes to the Lord. You can participate in responding to the word of God. All right? God bless y'all, everybody. I love you. Have a great day. I hope to see you next week. Be blessed.